Hello and welcome to episode 6. Uh, this week on the podcast I slip into conversation with Abby from Abby Nuts. Um, I am on a dog walk with my girlfriend Joy and my dog friend Mocha. Um, she's off the lead and having a great time. So this week I have been working on... Uh, we've been booking in the next episode for Historic Cooking. Um, so we're going to be shooting that this month. Uh, we've got a nice little bubble with Imogen who's kind of one of the directors and camera people. So yeah, I am currently working on uh, a new website where there'll be links um, to the episodes of the podcast as well as projects that I'm working on and blogs and yeah, other projects that I'm currently working on as well. So uh, there'll be links in the description. Uh, hopefully it should be coming out the same time as as this episode. Um, oh yeah, there's also um, patterns. I'm going to have a few free patterns on there and then there'll be links to patterns that I'm working on. Um, I've just about finished working out the dog sweater. So I'm going to be looking for test knitters. So if you are interested in becoming a test knitter for, there's a dog jumper and there's a, a people jumper as well. Um, check out the website and there's links to become a test knitter for my patterns. Abby is the one I followed for probably since the beginning of lockdown one. Uh, she makes amazing crochet animals and stuff and it's kind of one of the reasons why I followed her. So we talk a little bit about her crochet animals and Pokemon that she's done. Her favourite projects that she's been working on. We talk a bit about her patterns and her pattern writing. Uh, there's going to be links down below about some of her patterns that she recommends and that she's been working on. Um, and near the end we talk a bit about uh, some of the projects that I've worked on and want to work on. I'll see you at the end with just a little bit more chat. We step into the conversation with me kind of, uh, with us trying to work out when we started following each other. So I started my page in October 2019 and it was really quiet for some time and then COVID hit and then everyone was at home. So that's when I think lots of other people also started their pages. And there were a few accounts that I remember being around, like never not being around. Um, and I think your, yours is one of them. So I think it's, um, I think we've been following each other, not from the very beginning, but from the beginning of COVID. Yeah, I think I've, I've started following a lot more people because I think people had a lot more time to create and have a bit more time for their social media as well. Mm -hmm. The thing that I remember, the reason why I want to have started following your page is your little crochet animals and uh, yeah, <laughs> especially the Pokemon and Totoro as well. Like mm -hmm. when I saw those, I was like, it's a definite follow. Like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I went through a phase of just wanting to crochet constantly, um, but it's kind of gone away now. I think because it takes so I, I just always underestimate how much time it actually takes. Um, the sewing up takes a lot longer than it does if you just knit a cardigan. Um, so I'm just feeling knitting more at the moment. But I would really like to crochet the original 150 or 151 Pokemon. Um, I think I'm on about 15. So it's quite a long way to go. But I would say that's not, that's not too bad going, really. Yeah. Are, you, are you following a pattern for these or are you... Um, so some of them are, pat I have patterns, well, I found patterns for, so there's 53 stitches. She has three patterns for all the EV evolutions and then like Pikachu, um, the three starters, the originals, um, and then Loopy Catherine, she makes so many Pokemon. So if you're not already following her, you should be, um, yeah, she's oh, amazing. Sure and, I am, yeah. yeah. And then also crochet by Ricky. Um, she makes the best crochet toys out of anyone out there. Um, and she has really, two really cute dogs as well. Awesome. I will definitely yeah. give, make sure that I, if mm. I'm not following already, I will make sure that I follow mm -hmm. after this. Your crochet animals and like Pokemon and stuff look amazing. Like they look awesome. I, I, like, Thank you. <laughs> I've, I've, I've tried to dabble in crochet, but I just, I can't get into it. It took me a really long time to figure out magic circle or magic ring which is how you start um that's the hardest part and then after that it's a lot easier but it's just so different to knitting and 
yeah, when I, because I learned at work actually, because we have a craft club um, and yeah, I found it so hard. <laughs> like for a while, I'd just bring in my yarn and ask a friend to just start for me and then I'd just carry on and finish it. Um, but yeah, it's just really different. I think I spent like an hour trying to do the magic circle thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then I watched so many videos, like I was trying to find different videos to try and help me. I still couldn't get it. So I just was like, oh, yeah. I'll, I'll keep on knitting. <laughs> so how did you get into knitting and crochet? So I started knitting because my sister bought me um, a kit. I think it was from Wilkinson's. If you're in the UK, you'll know Wilco's. But mm -hmm. um, it was a knit your own penguin. Um, you just knitted a, a, two squares, sewed it together. Um, and then after that, that was when I was about 15. And then I just started knitting. And then when I moved to York, I found a really good yarn shop. So then it just escalated from there, I think, really. And then COVID happened, so everyone had more time. Yeah, but pretty much since I moved to York, which was about two, two and a half years ago, I've pretty much always been knitting something. Yeah, crochet, I just took the opportunity to learn from people at work. Yeah, and then I discovered Toft as well. There's such a community for Toft on Instagram. It's crazy. Um, but yeah, that they're really good for beginners. That's cool. Yeah, they. Um, mm. I think I've. I think I follow them. I'm pretty sure I do. Mm -hmm. What kind of wool do you like? What brands do you, do you really care about? Brands or? So I really like Lauren Aston Designs. Um, hers is chunk. It's chunky merino, but it's. I have quite sensitive skin, so um, I have to be quite careful which yarn to pick. But this is amazing, and the colors are really nice and. Um, her customer service is really, really good because um, I had a problem with a particular colour of yarn and, yeah, she was, the order took like eight weeks or something, but she was amazing and sorted it all out. So that's my favourite. Um, and also, I think it's a lot more affordable, like one of the gang and we are knitters. You can get 800 grams for £46, which is considerably cheaper than, especially one of the gang. I understand why Wool on the Gang is so expensive because mm -hmm. the quality is great, but yeah. it is really expensive. And it is mm -hmm. like, if you're a beginner or even if you want to knit a jumper, it, it does cost quite a bit. But working with other yarns, I do understand a little bit why it's so expensive because it, it, mm -hmm. it does feel a bit nicer. And but I think that's like, even if you go for a medium range kind of quality wool, I think it, it feels better than like a really cheap one. The only thing that I really notice a massive difference with is if you buy really cheap acrylic compared to if you buy like premium acrylic. Um, but there are some cheap like drops yarns. Okay. They're all amazing um, and they're very affordable. Um, so they do have 100% wool options that are, you can substitute for wool on the guy. Um, but they're not, it's not as nice. Yeah, no, um, the the drops Eskimo wool. I am a big fan. Um, mm -hmm. There's a, a wool shop not too far away from us in Leamington, which is mm -hmm. like a twenty minute drive or so away from Coventry, and um, it's one of those shops where they've got one of everything, and you can kind of like see and look at it. This was way before COVID times, mm -hmm. um, and then the, so they just have one of everything, then you can go and see what colours. But yeah, I I really like the Eskimo wool because mm -hmm. it's so much more affordable I mean it's only like 50 grams so it's it's quite a small ball of yarn but mm -hmm. you like need two balls for a hat and a lot for a jumper which I found out but yeah <laughs> yeah I think if you're making small items like with a ball of crazy sexy wool you can make two hats um if you've got scraps for your pom-pom um from somewhere else so I mean and that's 17 pounds 16.99 something like that mm. so if you're gonna make it for something small then it's a really good choice because you're not ever going to find a, a hat with that quality for half the price so like nine pounds eight pounds mm. but if you're going to make a jumper on the other hand then it's the price just skyrockets yeah unless you can get like if they've got a good sale or mm -hmm. discount going on then it, I feel like it's a little bit more worth trying to get some. But trying to go yeah, for definitely. it just like full price, it's... Yeah. <laughs> if you've got the money, 
go for it but i don't feel like most people especially in harder times like this have actually got that Mm -hmm. kind of money to spend no (laughs) what's your kind of favorite project that you've kind of worked on so far so i really like making cardigans i'm not really sure how it happened but i think i posted a picture of a lauren aston designs cardigan that i made and then suddenly my follow account really went high and then everyone was like oh yeah you make cardigans so it just became a thing so I guess that cardigan but which one it was exactly I don't really remember um I think it was the just a, the button button knit up cardigan in soft peach maybe um but I make lots of like I've adapted the pattern to make it how I liked it how I like it to fit and then So that's kind of, I do take custom orders, but that's what most people have asked for is that cardigan just in their own color choice. Yeah. So you kind of started with, well, your account started with crochet kind of Mm -hmm. things and then you kind of moved on to, you do a few hats and then. Yeah. Do you like working from patterns or do you, are you a type of person who kind of creates your own things? At first I did always follow patterns because I had no idea what to do. Um, But I think as you make more you kind of learn what you like and what you don't like um and then what works in a pattern and what doesn't really work so now if I if I sell anything it will be from my own pattern because a lot of people don't like you selling uh, like the finished product of their pattern but sometimes it's nice to follow a pattern and know that it will work yeah, yeah. I've, mm-hmm. I find if I'm working on something completely new and something a bit different, then I will have a look at different patterns, try and work out something. Mm-hmm. Because sometimes a pattern will give me new techniques because I'm kind of just self-taught. So yeah. like finding new different techniques and whatever is, is quite helpful. Um, mm-hmm. But then I will try and adapt. I mean, I, I'm not the best at following patterns. So I, I do mm-hmm. a lot of like improvisation with my knitting which I think helps make it unique. And then also it means that I can make sure it kind of fits me a bit better as well. Yeah. But I think that's the, the beauty of knitting is that there aren't any rules. It's not like if you're painting something and it goes wrong, you can't just take the paint off. You can just frog your, your project. So if it does go wrong, then it really doesn't matter. Yeah. Do you sell um, your patterns or do you sell? Um, So I have a website. It's quite a new project that I just decided to do. Um, And my patterns are on there, but they're all free. Um, um, The reason for it was when I properly started knitting, um, I could have, it's changed a lot now because this was a while ago, but I couldn't find any patterns I really liked or patterns that made sense to me because everything was abbreviated. Um, So I just decided that they could just be free because I I really feel the benefits of knitting, both like mental health, I find it really fun. Um, I'm a research scientist by day, so it's not very creative and then knitting allows me to just play around a bit um and I wanted it to be accessible to people who were maybe nervous about starting but wanted to know how to do it so that's why I chose for the patterns to be free and yeah I'm I'm not quite confident with um being a small a small business or whatever so it allows me to just share things without the worries of taxes and you know VAT and everything like that that I don't really understand yeah yeah that that makes (laughs) sense no I think that's a really really good idea because yeah I think knitting for some people could be quite intimidating I mean Mm -hmm. I know there's like projects that I've put off for ages because I've thought they looked really intimidating Mm -hmm. Um, but it's like just growing your confidence and just not taking it too seriously and just having to play and then like you said you can just frog it you can just kind of like start again Mm -hmm. and if anything you get twice the amount of knitting if you if you have to start yeah exactly so (laughs) yeah there's no unless you're doing it as like a a, like a full-on business that you can take the the time to like create something can't you yeah and also 
for a beginner, it might seem like a big investment in something that you might not end up enjoying. So like credit to the people who do sell their patterns and um, like Vicky's vest, for example, that's just, uh, is, I, I think I followed her when she only had a couple thousand followers and now it's like 30,000. Yeah, she's it exploded, only produced, it? yeah, she's produced one pattern, so that's incredible. Um, but if you're starting knitting, like by the needles, the yarn, um, and then the pattern, some patterns can cost more than a ball of yarn. Mm -hmm. um, so that's just why I just decided for it to be free. Yeah, that's basically. really cool. <laughs> um, yeah, I would say if people are looking at starting, I would say try and use a chunkier wool. Um, mm -hmm. I think that's how I started, and I'm guessing that's probably how you started it as well. Because yeah, <laughs> with chunky wool, you can see progress happening like in front of your face. Like yeah, with thin wool, like I, I used to work in a cafe in town, and mm -hmm. someone asked, me, they knew that I knitted, and he asked me if I could knit him a scarf, and I was like, yeah, sure. You bring over some wool, and I'll I'll make you a scarf. And he brought the thinnest wool I've <laughs> ever seen, and it took me so long like i've made full-on jumpers and cardigans quicker than a scarf uh, yeah for this guy um but yeah what yeah. would which of your patterns would you recommend for someone who hasn't started but is interested um so i recently popped up a scarf pattern um i it was for mohair i used um wool and the gangs is it called take care mohair or is that wax i don't know it was the it was the one on the gang's mohair yarn and that's just a simple scarfing garter stitch um but that can just be substituted with any yarn pretty much and just a little bit of maths um so i just recommend making a scarf um because then you learn casting off casting on how to knit you can also learn how to purl if you want to use stock in it instead of garter stitch um and once you've done that, then making a jumper is actually pretty easy. It might sound intimidating, but really it's just those techniques plus a few increases and decreases. Yeah, so, that sounds great. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I'll um, definitely put links in as well so people can yeah. go and check it out. Thank you. Um, yeah, so what, what do you do for work? You said you're, uh, yeah, what do you do for work? Yeah, I'm doing a PhD at the moment. Um, I'm at work now. Um, and I study um, peat soil water chemistry. Um, okay. So it's quite technical. There's a lot of data analysis. It's all about the computer. So that's why I enjoy knitting so much is because it's not linked in any way to work. Mm-hmm. At all. And actually, a lot of people in the department also knit and crochet. Um, so, I think I think a lot of us do do it because it's because working in academia can be quite stressful, especially now um, where the country's economic climate is more difficult for everyone. And mm -hmm. of course, the first place they cut money for is environmental science research. So. Yeah, it's just something completely different to what I do in the day. Basically. Yeah, I mean, this has definitely become uh, a bit of a theme through most of the <laughs> episodes is about how, um, for me, and I've spoken to a lot of people about how knitting and crafting is really good for people's mental health because it's a way <laughs> of like switching your brain off a little bit and just focusing on like the, the stuff that you've got in front of you. Um, <laughs> and I think... Yeah, I think if you're doing lots of data analysis stuff and it's a lot of kind of like tedious stuff in front of a computer, mm -hmm. just switching your brain off for a moment and knitting is like a, a healthy yeah. thing to do. Mm -hmm. And I think as well, another reason why it's so good for people's mental health is because we're so, the way that our society is, is that we're so disconnected from like the things that we eat, like we just go to the shop and the food's there, or we go to a clothes shop and then the clothes are just there. We have no connection to where it's made or where the materials come from or the person who sat behind the sewing machine and made it. So I think knitting 
it kind of makes you more connected with the things that you own. Um, it sounds maybe a bit like, I don't know what the word is. Yeah, I know what you mean. Like, I think a lot of people, a lot more people are clued about like fast fashion and mm -hmm. and knitting is not that. <laughs> like, no, actually, handmade stuff is is very slow, um, mm -hmm. and you can appreciate the work. And even if you were to buy something off Etsy from someone else, mm -hmm. you can still appreciate the work that goes into it as well. Yeah. Do you have any other hobbies? Before COVID, I used to play. Um, a spot called Korfball. Um, it's a bit like netball. It's quite popular at universities. It's, it's a mixed gender sport, um, a bit like netball. Um, so I played that probably since the time that I really started knitting properly as well. Um, so that's also completely different to knitting. Like the yeah. complete opposite or end of like hobbies. Again, before COVID happened and the gyms were shot, I used a power lift as well. Um, okay, wow. which is like the image that they have of people sat at home knitting is like little, little grannies yeah. <laughs> like knitting things and then go to the gym and uh, deadlift like more than your body weight is I don't know I just think it's cool yeah I think um, knitting has definitely got a, a kind of resurgence with like a, like our generation mm -hmm. um, actually knitting now and it's not it's not just like little frail old people. It's yeah. It's younger people who have, who are into sports, who are mm -hmm. guys like me. Um, like it's, it's for everyone, which is really cool. Mm -hmm. It is really refreshing actually to see men knitting. Um, there's another guy. I don't remember. Maybe he's from Sweden. His um, his Instagram handle is like hardcore knitter. I don't mm -hmm. know if you follow him. Yeah, so he pretty much, I think I followed, started following him at the same time as I started following you. Um, but yeah, it's just really refreshing to see just not women knitting. Yeah. Mm. I am trying to find more men that I can try and get on the podcast. So if anyone is watching and they would like to come on the podcast, <laughs> I'm recording season two currently. <laughs> yeah, uh, well, about... Um, like our generation, like younger people knitting. I remember when I first wanted to knit a jumper, um, I went into a yarn shop and was like, this is the pattern that I have. Can you help me find a wool? Um, and I wanted it slightly chunkier than the pattern said. So I would have to do some maths to like sort it out. And the woman behind the counter was just like, you can't substitute a yarn. Like the pattern won't work. Um, and I was like, well, you can. And then now on the internet, you just see people knitting like three strands of DK yarn to make a super chunky or whatever. And I just think it's great. Like, I don't know, the world's moving forward and so is knitting. <laughs> yeah, I think, yeah, there's the techniques and, and people are, are, are willing to take a bit more of a risk and just have a go. Mm -hmm. I think like, I remember kind of like teaching my mum, well, I wasn't really teaching her, but I said about um, when I'm casting on or if I've got kind of a complicated project using the stitch markers to like mm -hmm. mark off a hundred or that's not like 10 or 20 stitches when I'm casting on mm -hmm. and it helps so that if you're if you lose count you don't have to like count a hundred stitches and yeah. it kind of blew her mind it was like <laughs> such a simple thing but I think that kind of generation were so used to like just following it by the letter and yeah. and not experimenting. I think my mum, like, she still knits, and I think she's experimenting quite a bit more, mm -hmm. um, which is fun. So, do does do any of your family or anyone else um, knit around you? My mum knits a little bit. She was the one who taught me how to cast on, cast off, and knit. Um, and she used to have to like pick up my drop stitches um, and things when I first started. Um, my sister can knit. Um, but she prefers sewing, so she just got a sewing machine, so she makes her own clothes. Um, I would love my boyfriend to join in if he's watching this. <laughs> um, but so far, no, I think he's just fed up of seeing yarn all in the house because <laughs> there's a lot of it. Yeah, <laughs> uh, people keep saying that, um, like, keep asking my girlfriend if she's going to start learning how to knit and... Mm -hmm. She keeps saying, well, if she started knitting as well, then the house would be even more full with 
Yana. Yeah. We don't we don't have enough space for the fly I have as well. So yeah, she started. But then maybe your do- your dog would have its own wardrobe. Yeah, yeah, we yeah, yeah we would have to get a wardrobe for her. <laughs> I've just finished a jumper for her today, mm-hmm. um, and it looks really awesome. Do you, you've got a, a bunny? Yeah, thing. two bunnies. Two bunnies. Nice. Yeah. Um, what are they called? Barry and Brian. Barry and Brian. Yeah. <laughs> I just enjoyed um we got them so Barry's older we had got him at the end of March and then Brian like two months later but they're brothers they're just from a different litter okay so March Mm -hmm. so you got did you get them just before lockdown so we went to go meet uh Barry the first time just before lockdown um and then like put him in the box on the drive and then I went to go get him um, in the first lockdown um, and then Brian when the UK came out of lockdown the first time that's when we went to go and collect him so oh, cool. they've, been, they've been really good actually um, I just think like what would I have done all that time like sat yeah. at home without a pet yeah. and bunnies are so much smarter than people think as well not quite like a dog but they're definitely smarter. Yeah, I feel like you can kind of train them a little bit. Yeah, we got our mm-hmm. dog uh, during the first lockdown. Definitely, uh, it was a great decision to try and help because it kind of got us moving a lot more as well. And you have a reason to go outside now. Like your dog has to go for a walk. So. Yeah. Do you take your mm-hmm. rabbits for a walk at all? Or? <laughs> no. Um, I did want to at first, but... I just think if they managed to escape, we'd never, ever get them back. Especially Brian, the little one. He would just run off and I'd never see him again. So they, they just live in the house. Out of the kind of Pokemon, which is the favourite that you've made so far? Probably, so my friend asked me for an angry Pikachu. Um, that, was a real, that was really, really early on. Um, and I think that was probably my favourite. I also made her an angry Jigglypuff to go with him um and then on that theme someone also asked for a shroomish but an angry shroomish so there seemed to be like a niche at some point for angry pokemon yeah i've not heard that but yeah (laughs) (laughs) really strange do you think you'll start trying to do the whole the whole like 151 original or are you is that going to be like the third the fourth lockdown and then you'll start doing those I thought about it earlier, actually, like where best to start. Because I've, I've done all the Pokemon that um, are like my favourite or like my sister's favourite, for example. Um, so I just don't know where to start. Like, do I just pick a random one or should I go in order? No. I'm not really sure. But yeah. I, I would say go in order because then you can, it will kind of like push you to keep going. Because mm-hmm. I think if you try and do just your favourites, like if you have them in order, then you can go, well, after I've done this one, I know that I'm actually going to really enjoy the next one. And some like yeah. the evolutions are probably easier to like, you kind of got the base shape and then yeah. you just True. have to like elaborate a little bit more on some of its patterns. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like the evolution, the EV evolutions um, on 53 stitches, they pretty much all have the same pattern. And then you just add little bits to each one to make it um yeah, so like Umbreon, for example, and Eevee, they have the same pattern. They're just in different colours and there's a few colour changes. But yeah, that's probably the best idea, really. That's really cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I'm I'm quite jealous that you you, you can make them because I, I would love to have a go at making them, but crochet is just not for me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> also, I saw that you've made some clangers. That's what they're called, right? Uh, yeah, the clangers. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's so... Really cool. um, a lady who lives in Yorkshire, um, My Wonder Creations, I think her handle is, um, she asked me if a lady had asked her if she could make them, but she only crochets. Um, so then she asked me instead, and I was like, yeah, sure, I'll make them. But I had no idea how long they'd take. Yeah, because you've made a few there, haven't you? Yeah, I made five. I made five. Yeah. 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 Um, so I was like, oh, maybe like the bodies would only take one to two hours to knit. Because it, it is just backwards and forwards rows. It's 
it's nothing like complicated. There are a few short rows in there, but it took me about 10 hours per clanger. It took Jeez. ages and I was just every night like coming home, like making these clangers. Um, but yeah, they look great. Um, and I was really happy with them, but I don't ever want to make one again. Did you use a pattern for that or did you just kind of make no. them up? So there's um, a pattern on the BBC website um, nice. because they've um, bought the clangers back for CBBs. Um, so the lady who, or well, the wife of the original like creator of the clangers, um, she made them for the show. So then she's just given the BBC her pattern. Um, and yeah, it's free to download on, I just Googled clangers knitting pattern and it's just the first one that came up. Nice. So it's like the, orig- yeah. like the actual official mm-hmm. pattern as well. That's even cooler. Yeah. I just used, uh, it recommends fingering weight yarn, um, which is a no go for me. <laughs> so I, yeah. um, just use Aran weight instead. <clears throat> I think paint box yarns from Lovecrafts. Okay. Um, yeah. yeah. And the five took about three and a half balls of yarn. Well, I guess you could always I mean, just make it with a thicker yarn and thicker needles and then just make bigger clangers, couldn't you, really? Yeah, yeah. How do your uh, custom orders work? Are you are you still doing custom orders or are you, are you paused them for now? I paused them before Christmas. Um, but yeah, normally people just message me on Instagram or um, on Etsy uh, and then we just sort it out <laughs> basically they some like with the most recent one that I've done um they're like really crazy cardigan it's like patchwork she just sent me which colors she wanted and then said strike sleeves and patchwork body and then that's what I came up with but then other people have a really specific thing that they want that's really cool yeah were you were you busy over Christmas with the the cardigans and custom work I was busy as well for my own family's gifts. Um, but I have two at the moment to do. Um, one's time sensitive, so I need to get on with it. But the other one, the lady was just like, just take your time, just do it whenever, you, whenever you're ready. That's cool. Mm. Yeah, they look yeah. awesome. Like I really like the patchwork one. Like I think that's, I'm I'm really enjoying like patchwork and like different colors and different like mm-hmm. techniques kind of going to going on because it's a lot more unique than something that you just yeah. buy in a supermarket. So yeah, I, I mean, my boyfriend looked at it and was like, "What is that?" <laughs> um, but I mean, you're never ever going to find that in the shop, um, no. at least not for the price that I, that she paid for it. So yeah, that's why knitting's so great really have you got any other projects that you've got in the pipeline i'm actually writing the pattern for the patrick cardigan um i'm just making another size um because the sizing is very easy to adjust it's just the sleeve length that kind of confuses me a little bit so i'm just making a larger size and then that will be available for free um my the website is just abbynits.com Awesome. And then you've got also got a link on your Instagram as well that people can go and check out. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I am curious about um, how, what you thought about the boys are back sweater that you knitted from one of the gang. Yeah. In the end, I think it turned out quite nice. When they originally asked me if I wanted to do it, I was like, hell yeah, definitely. And mm-hmm. then they sent me some sizes and like i think the measurements that they sent me were different to the ones on the pattern so i was like okay, okay. cool i'll go for a large mm-hmm. um and then they sent me the large kit i think but then i should have checked the sizing again when i actually had mm-hmm. the pattern but i was so excited about knitting it <laughs> i ended up running out of wool because i was ended up knitting like the really large one yeah i, I still wear it every now and again um the yarn is the like alpaca. Is it like alpacino merino or something like that? That's the one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, super cozy. Um, I think I've still actually got a little bit of the, the yarn left over. Mm-hmm. I think it's nice that one of the gang are trying to do a little bit more knits for men because it's not just men who want to knit because yeah, there's, yeah. there's a growing number of those, but as a, 
like people might want to knit for men as well. Um, I just kind of wish they had a few more complicated pieces because I know that like they've got hundreds and hundreds of patterns for women. Yeah. And they've got a complete range of like beginners and more complicated stuff. And I think that there is definitely the market for more complicated patterns. Mm -hmm. Um, so it would be nice to see that. Um, but I was like, I was so flat flattered and Mm -hmm. that they kind of came to me and asked me if I wanted to, to do it. Um, yeah, yeah I mean, congratulations. If, yeah, thank you very much. I was like, <laughs> yeah, I was quite surprised when I had the message. Um, and then it came through and it was kind of nice. Like I tried working it and it was m- way too big. And then I ended up, I think one of the really nice things was I was able mm-hmm. to take it all the way back mm-hmm. and start it again. So I kind of got to knit it twice. Mm-hmm. Um, but that kind of inspired the kind of jumper that I made. But that was when we were... I can't, if we're going through the first lockdown or I, well, I didn't have enough money mm-hmm. to like get some more wool in the mm-hmm. game world to try and redo because yeah. I did uh, a pattern call well I made it up and I called it um, Dancing in the Moonlight mm-hmm. um, where I tried to just go a bit more fancy with the pattern um, but I kind of I want to do that again with the wool in the gang wool at mm-hmm. some point because the other wool that I used wasn't as good quality and it's a bit more clumpy than the wool in the gown wool. Yeah. Mm. yeah. There are a lot of men's patterns on Drops Design website. I don't know if you've looked at it. Yeah, I'm going to try and... Mm. I've got a couple in mind that I want to start on. Um, mm-hmm. I think during this lockdown again, I want to try and... I've still got a whole box of wool that is still left over that I'm trying to like <laughs> see if I can use up again um mm-hmm. before I order some more wool but I have got my eye on I really want to try making jumpers that go and go from the neck down like a yoke is that what it's called yeah 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 I've mm-hmm. never done that before and I really like the kind of northern kind of like uh, yeah the Norwegian mm-hmm. kind of style all the Swedish kind mm-hmm. of style jumpers. I think they yeah. look stunning. Mm-hmm. Um, and I definitely want to give that a go at some point, but that's mm-hmm. after I've kind of got rid of some yarn. Mm. There is um, a lady, I don't know her actual name, but her Instagram handle is More Thunder. Um, and she makes a lot of like patterned yokes. Um, and some of them are incredible, um, mm. but they're all like excessively difficult like not really easy but not too hard um, and yeah. she uses like dk weight yarn or um iron weight yarn so yeah check them out too there you go and that was episode number six hope you all enjoyed it uh thank you very much for abby coming on the podcast uh, had a really good conversation yeah so it is still pretty cold like we had for like one good day of spring so far and it kind of tricked us where I was actually able to wear shorts on a walk and uh, now it is very cold I've got my woolly hat back on and a fig jacket so uh, yeah the UK's got a roadmap to exit the lockdown so hopefully we'll start going back to like things will open a bit Uh, I'm a little bit worried that people have seen that notification and that press release and and now we're just going to do whatever they like Um, and it's just going to set us back up even more but I will be looking forward to getting back to work and in the kitchen again. I finally finished uh, The Office, the American Office, (laughs) quite enjoyed watching it Um, but now I finish that I'm not sure what to start next, kind of want a big season that I've a big show that I've not really watched. Uh, Joy and I have also just finished WandaVision, which we really enjoyed. Quite complicated, um, especially if you watched like the Nerdist YouTube uh, videos as well. Mocha, leave. Um, yeah, quite complicated. And then we're also watching The Servant on Apple TV. That's really good. We started the second season already. And uh, yeah, definitely give those 
a watcher if you haven't, if you've subscribed to those two platforms. But yeah, let me know in the comments, like what show you think I should start watching. Next week, I have Lizzie uh, from uh, Hive Knits. Um, again, someone else I've followed for quite a while and have really wanted to uh, have a conversation with. So tune in to next Friday. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe, uh, follow, and more importantly, uh, share the podcast as well. I would love more people to watch and see, listen. Um, yeah, uh, there'll be links down below to my new website. So if you want to find out more about this podcast and projects that I'm working on or becoming a test knitter, click on the links down below. And uh, yeah, I will see you next Friday.